The goal for this build was simple. Build a PC that costs no more than $500 that can handle everyday tasks and can play some modern games. The finished build was a PC that outperformed the PS4 Pro, Xbox Series S, and the base model M2 MacBook Air. Also keep in mind that this MacBook costs twice as much as this PC and has way less memory. Starting off this build, we have the case. The case I picked out is the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L, costing only $40 on Amazon. This case is Micro ATX, which does give plenty of room for expandability including adding more storage, cable management, and for adding a graphics card. For the motherboard, we picked out the ASRock A520M HDV. It's a very cheap motherboard at around $65, but it does have an AM4 socket for the CPU we'll be adding, and two memory slots which can hold I believe up to 32GB of RAM. There's also two PCIe slots, one of them can fit a graphics card, and the motherboard also has an M2 slot for an SSD. For the CPU, we picked out the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. This is a 6-core multi-threaded processor with a clock speed of 3.9GHz. If you are adding a graphics card to this build, you can just go with the regular Ryzen 5600. The only difference between that and the 5600G is that the G has integrated graphics. So if you decide to go with that route and skip buying a graphics card, that will bring the total cost of this build to around $360. For memory, we have 16GB of DDR4. If you're going to be playing games or doing other tasks like video editing, you have to have at least 16GB of RAM. This set of memory I have here costs around $35 on Amazon. For the power supply, we picked out the Thermaltech Smart 500W power supply. This costs around $40 on Amazon. For storage, we picked out a 1TB WD Blue SSD. SSDs that use the SATA interface are usually cheaper than NVMe drives. I actually did test out two different drives for this build. While the NVMe drive was much faster in benchmarks, there wasn't any noticeable difference when actually using the computer. Anyways, drives like these are around $55 to $60. Alright guys, just as I was about to start editing this video, take a look at what just happened. The listing for the SSD that I specifically picked out for this build just went up in price from $60 something dollars to $80. Yeah, I can no longer recommend this. I am checking Amazon. There are a few other options, like this Team Group T-Force one, and that's $55. It's the same brand that the memory that I bought is also from, so yeah. For the graphics card, I picked out the XFX Radeon RX 580. Keep in mind, this is an older graphics card, so it does not support hardware accelerated ray tracing or DLSS which is more of an NVIDIA thing. It does still have VR support and DirectX 12 support. This card also has better price to performance compared to other budget graphics cards, including the GTX 1630, GTX 1650, and even the newer RX 6400, while also housing more video memory, which just happens to be 8GB of GDDR5. Amazon is flooded with aftermarket RX 580s costing from $90 to $110. These are labeled as the 2048 SP model. Please do not buy these, they are not real RX 580s. They have less stream processors, which brings performance closer to an RX 570. Instead, look for this one produced by XFX, which costs around $130. There are other optional components you can add to this build. I did add a Wi-Fi card, but this isn't exactly needed if you are setting this up near a router and are okay with connecting over Ethernet, which this motherboard does have. For the operating system, I installed Windows 11. Also keep in mind, this also is not included in the build. The computer took a little less than an hour for me to build. Once I was finished, I installed the operating system and went straight to benchmarking. Geekbench scored 2054 in single core and 8484 in multi-core. Cinebench gave a score of 1421 in single core and 10591 in multi core. Pretty good score so far. Of course, many of us build PCs to play games. How does gaming perform? Well, I did test out a few games and ran some benchmarks, and here's how it went GTA 5 runs very well. 1080p, very high settings, VSync disabled, it averages over 60 FPS. However, there is a bit of frame tearing. If you drop a few settings down to high and enable VSync, it runs at a very stable 60 FPS. You could also run this game in 4K on high settings, but it'll be limited to running it at 30 FPS. Fortnite also runs very well. 1080p, high settings, Nanite disabled, TSR medium with the resolution set to quality, we can still get 60 FPS. You could also bring it up to epic settings, but I would recommend setting TSR to medium balanced to avoid getting frame drops. To keep this video short, I'll post the rest of the benchmarks here. If you want to play lighter games like Minecraft or Roblox, this computer is perfectly fine. Many users online have also suggested undervolting the RX 580. 
While this can decrease temperature and fan noise, it can also be risky. Instead, a better solution would probably be to lower some graphical settings and turning on VSync or some kind of frame limiter. That way your graphics card will not run at full blast and generate lots of heat and fan noise. I did add some additional components in this build, including this PCIe Wi-Fi card with external antennas, red LEDs which go inside the case, and some extra storage to store some games. Anyways, that's about it. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this, and I'll see you guys later.